This is easily the most powerful stove I have ever tested. This is the Bulin 6800 watt remote canister stove. So let's check it out. All right, everybody, welcome back. So I had four different subs ask me to check this out. And I figured, you know what? I've been wanting to check it out myself, so I figured today we'll do a review on it and see if it lives up to the hype. Now, in my experiences so far, this thing is pretty amazing. I have not done a boil test on it yet. We're going to do that today. The amount of water this thing says it can boil in two to three minutes, it's conflicting on the, on the Amazon page, is uh, pretty amazing. So we're going to see if that actually works. On the Amazon page, it says it'll boil one liter of water in two minutes. Later on in the description, it says... Uh, one liter of water in three minutes. So we'll actually find out when we do it today. So I can't really tell you exactly what it's going to be. But uh, being that I had a bunch of subs ask me to try it, I figured I'd try it out myself. Now this has 6,800 watts of firepower to it. So it will definitely boil your water quickly, even if it's two or three minutes. So let's take a look at it really quick, and I'll set it up while I'm telling you about it. All right. This is lightweight and portable, but it's not super lightweight. It's about two pounds. But for a larger camping area, or car camping, or maybe a bug out camp or something, it's definitely going to be pretty cool. You will get this case here. The case is pretty well made. It's a little padded. Um, nice to have it for uh, car camping and stuff, you know, where stuff's banging around in the back. You want to make sure it's protected. Okay, it does have a little instruction manual here, which is fairly simple, but this is... This is fairly intuitive to begin with. You're going to know what you need to do with it anyway. Um, you're going to set this up pretty much like this. Got your feet here. Now you got, you notice how long this cord is. This is a remote canister stove. You notice how long that cord is. That's about four feet of cord. And it does take your typical, you know, uh, isobutane canisters. You can use adapters on this. I did try it with a regular butane can, you know, the tall can. Works perfectly fine, same way. I also tried it with an adapter on the one pound green propane tanks and those work very well as well. For our uses today, we're going to be using a larger isobutane can. I'll show you it here. It isn't full. Um, we are going to measure it beforehand and then after to see how much propane it uses, but, uh, isobutane I mean. But uh, this is, I've used this before, so we'll see how much of that it uses. But yeah, you can see that's a nice long, long, long cable. Um, this does fold over like that for storage. You can fold it out. Just make sure when you hook it up that it's fully sealed. Okay? You want to make sure it's all the way sealed like that. Definitely a nice sturdy stove. It is definitely bigger. Okay? Um, we've tested these little stoves out that are about this big, you know. This would be more suited for, say, a, a camp situation, car camping, maybe an emergency situation where you had to cook for more than one person at home or whatever. Again, like I always caution, Make sure that you have adequate ventilation if you're using this thing indoors. Um, I have my, you know, my carbon monoxide monitor set up over there, and I also have a carbon monoxide alarm inside this room here. But uh, I think I'll be fine. I have the side door open a little bit, and uh, it's fairly chilly in here with a little bit of breeze, so we'll be okay. Now, to set up the top of it, okay, for your, for your pan, you're going to fold these out, and you'll notice that something is left behind. This is kind of neat. You have these little inside pieces here. So if you have a smaller pan that fits in there or pot, that will fit in there. But if you have a really small one, you can fold them all in and set your like a little, you know, Coleman uh, camp stove, a little Coleman camp set or something. Um, your uh, Stanley uh, cook set, that would fit in there no problem. But we're going to use this like this today because we're going to be using a larger Stanley camp set. Um, I'm just going to be basically, we're going to be using the big, the big pot here. So I mean, I could put it like that, no problem. Uh, we could do it a bunch of other ways. I'm probably going to try. Let's see. Fold them back like that and see if it fits on there. It looks a little... Yeah, that actually would be better because it doesn't have it floating on top of the, uh, the piece there, the burner. So that actually fits pretty well, so I'm pretty pleased with it. Now, my first experience with this, okay, uh, when I turned it on, I noticed that it definitely had a whole lot of firepower. This thing sounds like a jet engine taking off. For an isobutane stove, that's kind of unusual. I'm used to like the uh, the gas stoves, the Savea 123s and stuff like that sounding really loud. This thing is fairly loud, so it's not going to be very stealth. However, it really is built very well. i got to say, you know, for the Chinese camp stoves, this thing is built really sturdy. Very thick stainless steel. Uh, does hold up pretty well for uh, to heat. Um, this thing did not get overly hot on the bottom. So, I mean, I do have it on a piece of cardboard here, a piece of wood here, because I don't want it to melt my plastic 
sheeting on the top here, but uh, it does not get overly hot, and it cools down fairly quickly, too, when you're done. So if you have to move after, you're going to have a, a, the ability for this to cool down. Perhaps the most important feature that I found in this is that you can simmer on it. Normally on stoves that have this much power, simmering is kind of a joke. You, you know, it'll burn whatever you're trying to simmer. This has the ability to turn down. The control here is very, very sensitive, and it's actually very well made. It feels like a good piece of steel there, a good hunk of steel, not, uh, not junky stuff. So it's definitely very well made, and it will allow you to simmer at a lower um, volume on the stove and uh, cook your stuff, maybe reduce your sauces. Whatever you're going to be making, you can do that with this guy right here. So it's definitely built for more than um, one person. Um, definitely not a backpacking stove, not at two pounds, but it has its place in your preparedness plans. I would even keep this and say, use it at home, you know, during an emergency. I can make coffee on this, I can make bacon and eggs, whatever I want to do, I can do it on this stove, and again, with adequate ventilation inside your home, you want to make sure you're not uh, getting too much carbon monoxide, but with adequate ventilation, this thing will work awesome. Another amazing point on this is its load capacity. They say it's rated for 165 pounds. That's pretty amazing for a portable stove. So I really got to say, you know, so far from my initial testing of just turning it on and running it a little bit, and from the specs I'm reading, it actually sounds pretty impressive. Now we're going to put it to the test with, uh, with a liter of water. That's around four cups. This does have markings. The Stanley uh, pot has markings for one liter. So we are going to test it. But the first thing I'm going to do is weigh this and see how much this weighs. And uh, we'll weigh it after and uh, see how much is left after how much we used in that two to three minutes of boiling water. So let me go set that thing up and we'll bring you right back. Now, I've never been able to get a good view of the, uh, the weight on it, but I'll read it to you. So let's see, we've got this can. Now, I have used this can, so it's going to weigh more than the 440 grams. I'm showing 528, 528 grams. So at the end, when we um, weigh it again after we boiled our water, we'll see just how much of it we've used up as far as grams of gas. You can do it by weighing the whole thing and then just subtracting. It's obviously not going to take away any of the metal. It'll just burn the gas that's inside. So we'll see how much that uses. I have a feeling this is going to use a lot of um, fuel. It's not going to sip fuel, so we'll try it out. All right, let me connect it, bring you back, we'll put the water on, and we'll time our liter of water and see if it does, lives up to the height. All right, so we're all connected. I have this over here. Um, I think four feet is kind of a bit much on that, but it will keep it far enough away. I have it right here. This never gets that hot where I worry about this getting too hot. Um, this far away even, but if you really do get concerned about it, you can see you can move that thing a long way away. So, let's fill up our pot with one liter of water. I did notice something too, and I put a little pan on this previously. Um, you will get scorching on a little pan because of the flame, so you probably want to turn it down a little bit. We get it up to the one liter mark there. Right on the money, wow. There we go. Alright, so you're at one liter. We're going to cover that. We're going to fire this up first. Let's get it rolling first. Move this out of the way. You can see how loud that is. Or I can take it down to an incredibly low simmer. That is a really neat feature. So, let me get this thing fired up. I'll bring you back um, when it's going. And uh, we'll also bring you back when it's done. But I want to get it going first. So let's put this on here. All right. Pop it on there. There we go. Turn it up. And I'll bring you back. One, two. All right, we are about one minute and eight seconds in. I want to show you what's going on in the pot here. It's starting to get some bubbles, so it's definitely doing its job. Let's see if we can do it in two minutes. I got a feeling it's going to be more like three. All right, we just hit two minutes. I'm going to stop it. I want you to see inside here. There you go. Two minutes to a rolling boil. Let's turn that down a little bit and back you up a little bit here. Okay. Let me move my phone too because it does get warm nearby. There you go. Two minutes to a rolling boil of one liter of water. Um, two minutes and three seconds. However, I forgot to hit the button when I started it. So it's about two minutes. Not bad at all. That's really, really impressive. And it's still actually boiling in the corner there. The uh, pan must be hot there. The, uh, the pot stand must be hot on that side. Definitely an impressive little stove. All right, let me clear this all off, cool it off. I'll show you how to shut it down and pack it away. And we'll come back when that's all done. Got to say, it passed that test very, very well. One of the neat things about this, before I shut it down, I'll show you, is you've got this little wind guard around here. So if you're using this in a high wind environment, 
this will protect it somewhat. I did like the fact that there's not much space between there, just enough to get oxygen in to let the flames burn, but not a ton of air so the wind can blow it all over the place. All right, let me pull this off, and I'll bring you back, and we'll pack it all up. All right, I wanted to weigh this while this cools down. Um, I'm showing it's about 500 grams right now, or 501. So this is used about 0.28 grams of fuel for a two-minute boil. That was really, really impressive. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I figured we'd be in like the 450s, you know. So it's 50, 501, and you can't see it. I tried to zoom it in before I started the camera. This uh, particular scale kind of stinks for showing you on video what, what the weight is. But it uh, definitely is impressive. 500 grams after a two-minute burn. 0.28 grams of fuel used up in there. Not bad. All right, be back in a minute. All right, been about five minutes. I put it outside to cool off. It's all cooled off now. I do like this gas tube. That will give you a more consistent um, flame pattern and also a more consistent burn in very cold temperatures. That heats up the gas as it's coming in. So even if it's cold from the tank, as the gas comes in, it heats it up and keeps the flow going and keeps your burn pretty stable. So I do like that. It's kind of like some other camp stoves that I've seen that use gas. They use that tube to kind of prime it and heat it up to heat the gas up. So that's kind of handy, too, for colder conditions. It is about, what have we got here? 42 degrees in here right now. So thankfully I have some warm clothing on because <laughs> it's cold out here. Uh, and that burned, as you saw, perfectly fine. And it didn't even affect the burn time. I mean, I was almost right on the money with two minutes for a liter of water boiled. That's about four cups in two minutes. So if you've got to boil water quickly, that's your stove. You also saw that it can simmer really, really low. So that's handy for cooking. I'm probably going to be using this in some cooking videos in the future um, just to see how well it does simmer. Because sometimes it can be deceiving. It can look like it's simmering really low and really could be burning the heck out of the bottom of your pan. But so far, I'm really impressed with it. 0.28 grams of gas in two minutes to boil one liter of water. Definitely a good one in my book. And the dimensions on it. Let's talk about dimensions quick. 7.2 inches by 3.9. Collapsed. It's a little bit smaller, of course. I'm going to show you how I will collapse it. I have the bag right here. Let's push these in. Push that. And we're going to do the bottom legs here. These will push in a little bit more positively. And I'm going to wrap that around there. I can get this around here. There we go. And I'm just going to stick it behind here. So, oops, I'm going to fold that over. Stick it in there so it kind of closes up nicely. There you go, nice compact package. Now, yeah, it's not as small as a small kind of tiny little stove, but uh, definitely packs a punch. The price on it. Now, this is where some people will freak out a little bit. These used to be 50 bucks. They've gone up some. I believe they're $71.65 right now. So, you're going to have to check it out there on, the, on Amazon. I will put a link down below if you're interested. I think for long term, um, because of the quality of the build, the way it's made, I think for long term, this would be an excellent option for use indoors with adequate ventilation during a power outage or an emergency of some kind. And a larger camp, like a family camp situation where maybe you're trying to heat up a bunch of soup or do something like that, boil some water for purification, even melting snow in an emergency, you know, when you need some drinking water, definitely uh, would, would work out for that. So... I'm impressed with it. The price is a little bit up there, but again, this is a larger, um, you know, definitely larger, definitely more powerful camp stove, portable camp stove, than most of the ones we test, which are in the $20 to $30 range. So if you're looking for something a little bit bigger, that's your guy right there. All right. So I will have the link down below with all my other links. Don't forget to check out all our Amazon affiliate store stuff in there. Um, that will be in the store as well, but I also have other stuff that I reviewed. So if you're interested in shopping, even if you don't want to buy anything from my store, just click the link to shop as you normally would. We do appreciate that. Check out our freeze-dried wholesalers link. Down below, um, we have been selling that roast beef like crazy. According to the owner of the company, that was like a record video when I did that video. So if you want to get in on that, he still has more, but you got to get in on it before the shortages hit and things get a little bit weird. So definitely check out his stuff. Um, we've done a bunch of videos on there, and you click that link, and you'll save 15%. So if you want to check my playlist, you can see all the stuff that I cook with freeze-dried wholesalers. I do have a playlist on my videos page if you're interested in all the freeze-dried wholesaler videos. Below that, we have our My Patriot Supply link. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. Anything you want to get from My Patriot Supply, you can click that link and check it out. And our Thrive Life freeze-dried store as well. I want to wish you guys a very happy new year. Hopefully, 2022 isn't as stressful as 2021 was. 
Uh, I do want to thank you all for watching and an amazing year. We broke 100,000 subscribers this year and we're on our way to 200 now. Come on, folks. <laughs> Join up. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It really does help us with the algorithm and the channel. And I thank you guys for watching. Happy New Year. Stay safe and stay prepared.